Oh, actually, it was better. I mean, it wasn't, it wasn't great, was Have it? Have you seen my arthritis? <laughs> I mean, Have you seen my arthritis? arthritis? <laughs> England must be in the semis. <laughs> <laughs> Hello and welcome to The Rest is Football with Micah Richards and me, Gary Lineker. England are through to the semi-finals of Euro 2024. <laughs> Come on! This is what we wanted, didn't we, guys? This is what we wanted. We wanted a performance. We wanted something that we could talk about in a positive manner. Something that made us believe. And I honestly believe we got that tonight. I, I do. Um, the tactics was different. We mentioned, and you asked me before, what do England need to do? And I said to you, the need to go high. high. It was particularly the wing backs. The wing backs. It was strange because when we when we saw the team, we thought Saka would play on the left and Trippy would be on the right. But actually, they switched. Yeah. And Saka was in a position where. We've seen him so many times for Arsenal where he just, he committed defender. He could go inside, he could go outside. Trippier was obviously very good too. Not the same effect on that side, mm-hmm. obviously, because he's still coming on to his right foot. But I have to give Southgate tactic, you know, in terms of his tactics. It, it was did really it was well. was significantly better. Mm-hmm. And now there's a lot of people who go, ah, oh, England weren't that good. Out there. It wasn't exhilarating, but... Tournament football is really, really hard, but it was a massive improvement on what we'd seen before. When you when you say exhilarating, yeah. I mean look well, the at the team. But, was. Yeah, but look, <laughs> but look at the teams in the tournament. There's only really Spain and and Germany who have been sort of impressive. Switzerland to a certain degree well, in terms of their yeah, rotations. Yeah. I give them not the big build up, but you had to respect them. And at times in the game, I thought they they did did well. Um, by the way, let me just jut in here because we, we've we've got quite a crowd in tonight. Um, Who have we got in tonight? Then have we? I've got I've got three. I've got two of my. How many kids have we got? <laughs> Four that I know of. <laughs> you all look like you. I don't know if I should look over there. Well, or that, look well at that's you. encouraging. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, um, George and Angus have come in, and we've got George's partner Seb, and we've got lots of people from Goal Hanger. Yes. And I've got my friend JD over there with his JD. girlfriend Tansy. Uh, yeah, hey, hey. 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 And the, yeah, they're all England fans, and they were, uh, yeah, it's great. Who's your favourite son? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, they're all rising. They're all right. Ooh. Ooh. Uh, no. Uh, no, you've only got one son. That's easy for you to say. <laughs> no, no, I, I'm not going to go down that route. <laughs> <laughs> uh, they all cost me a bloody fortune. So anyway. <laughs> you know, a lot of people said, well, yeah, England weren't that good though, did it? But I thought first half, really encouraging. Um, massive change from previous games. Um, they played a lot higher, as you said, the fullbacks and the central defenders pushed up and all of a sudden we looked compact. It's the first time we really looked like a cohesive team in this tournament so it was really encouraging did they create many chances no because they're playing against a very well organized very good defensive team in that sense um but they managed to push switzerland back whereas switzerland in all their games previously managed to put the opposition into the other half didn't they so it was it was much better than we'd seen in the previous four games i would say um and they kept it going and they showed great attitude great courage i thought um, and I was so pleased for a number of people in there, in the performance. Um, Gareth Southgate, firstly, because yeah, everyone's crying out for substitutions because they were getting, you could see the pace dropped it, because there's always a spell in the game, particularly in international football. We know tournaments are so difficult. We always think we've got a divine right to dominate everybody. And it, it, in reality, it doesn't work like that. So, but they dipped a little bit, but, and everyone's going, should make changes. And then they scored and then he made Immediate changes, brought three players on. Um, so that was, you know, I think a good decision to do that at that particular time. Scored a couple of minutes later. Um, the only thing I would say was you would hope to create a little bit more, but I, I think, think if they crumb. play a team that attack and you can counter, if, you've got, if you're playing against a team that are sitting, it, it, 
it ain't that easy. No, it is. Who impressed you the most? Because from my point of view, I really like Konza coming into the side. Mm. We talked massively about Gay being out of the team, being suspended. I thought Konza did did really well. Um, I, I like the box midfield. Me too. It really worked. It there was really a lot of rotation did. within there. I mean, Mainu is, is a class act. I know he came off at a certain period because we had to chase it at that point. Mm -hmm. um, but alongside, I thought Rice was, I mean, people were saying that, but, but he has to be, in, he, he did a really important job for England. I mean, so many times he made interceptions and he, he, he kept England ticking. Um, I thought Bellingham and Foden switched beautifully together. I thought Foden was excellent. Um, Bellingham as well, going through them and like those dribbles he does and he can chop and come inside and create chances. So, um, but Saka was for me, I think Saka was the star. Yeah. I mean, to, I, we've to talked do about what him so did. long. So I mean, he's so good, isn't he? I was a little bit worried when he was playing wing back. Mm. I thought England would go into that sort of negative mindset where they would drop a little deeper, but they were brave. Me too. I was convinced. They were brave. I was convinced we did, but we didn't. And Saka, whether he was going inside, whether he was going out, you know, he, he took his goal so well. We've seen it so much for Arsenal this season. I think in terms of goal scoring, after Kane, I think Saka's the most important. The I think his one, numbers. Yeah. yeah, he hasn't scored for a while. First off, for about 30 but months. He, for but he does make an impact. Yeah. And it's not just what he does on the ball. It's his strength as well. And his defensive ability. I think that's why Southgate trusts him so much. We talked about Cole Palmer. And a lot of people on social media, a lot of fans are, are calling for Palmer to start. But when you've got Saka, who's so consistent and he can give you the balance within the team. And in the other position that he could play, which would be where Foden or Bellingham are now. I mean, Foden, I think, came to life because he's in, you know, he, he's so good in as a 10. And mm -hmm. he's, you know, he can take the ball on the half turn. And particularly in the first half, I thought he was really, you know, probably one of the key players. But, but you're right about Saka. Saka's... You know, and I mean, he's such a, like, kind of comes across as a sweet kid, but he's tough, you know. You was tearing up a little bit, weren't you, on BBC, in terms of... When, when Saka scored. When Saka scored his yeah, penalty, obviously, we, we all know what happened in the, in the last Euros, when he, he missed the penalty and his stick he got for that, uh, to, to overcome that and have the gajones to yeah. go again. Cajones. Cajones. <laughs> <laughs> Cajones. Yeah, we don't want to talk about draws, do we? <laughs> <laughs> to o to yeah. overcome that and just have the personality mm. to, to do it. And I think that's where you can measure a player. Anyone in the England squad, we know they've got ability, but it's in the moment. We talk about the Jude Bellingham moment against Slovakia, the over and then Kane not playing well but getting the goal. Okay, staying in the game today against a well organized Swiss side that okay, in certain moments, you're going to have to defend. But when you're on the ball, are you going to be brave? I think in terms of tactically, Southgate, the way he managed to get Foden and Bellingham in the tens, obviously Rice, mm -hmm. and I thought Maynew was was very good again in terms of oh, yeah. when he's traveling with the ball, the passes he makes. There was one part in the game where he took three out of the game, where he just dropped his shoulder and bursted forward. But I think that's what we've been crying out for. And, and again... We'll give credit to Southgate for that, for, for being brave. A lot of people will think, okay, we're playing a three or five at the back. It's negative. But actually... It wasn't a five. It, it actually, in the game, it was a positive move. And that's what... I mean, it was hard to think that it. actually Saka was playing as a wing back. And it, because he was so high most of the game. But we talked and about even at the end when they switched him to, like, left, left wing back. And he, he tracked back and cut out that cross right near the end. Amazing. I mean, he's 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 brilliant. Player. But it, it was so good tactically because we mentioned before on, on on the previous podcast, the way they have a Visha on the left and a Doy on the right. Yeah. If you allow them to go really high on you, they they make you become a five at the back. Yeah. They didn't allow that. That's what they, I was really worried about. That's before what the game. I, was I thought worried that about. would happen because we've seen so many times England sit, and you know, we were. I think we were kind of. We praised them a lot at half time because it, I think it was, you know, if it, in an ordinary game you go, you know, it was it was good. Didn't create too many chances, or, well, hardly any chances. A couple of shots that were good efforts. But I think the reason we were kind of so, I think probably 
delighted about the first half performance was, was the fact that it was so different from the previous one. Exactly. And, and the tactics had worked and you could see the difference. You know, you could see Foden engaged in the game when he was on the left. We were all calling for it for all four games that, that Foden should play in the centre. But then when he did... He comes. It makes a difference. Life. But it's not. It's life. not just on. It's not just in the number ten role. There was times where what I liked about that that boxing midfield there was rotating. So sometimes Bellingham would go a little bit further forward and Foden would come deep. Rice would make a run forward. Then you have Manu there. Foden would get, would get on the ball and dictate the the play from a deeper role. And that's all we have been asking for. And that again is 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 credit to the to the manager. I think one positive as well is seeing Luke Shaw back for the yeah. balance for yeah. the team. Obviously, you come on at the time, the free at the back, he's played he left like side of the free. He, he, he looked, looked like he hadn't missed a game and he's been out for what months and months. Uh, but, and that takes, mm. and I think, again, when you talk about fitness, you never have your, your sharpness because when he come and he's been out for so long. The only thing it, I will say, from my experience, which is not that much, I was very lucky, I didn't get injured too often, but and I've seen it, so, is when you come back from injury, and I don't think it would apply to Luke in this, the particular game, but your first game, proper game back, yeah. you look really sharp. And then it's the next, next game the next and the next game. after that. But maybe he's only got to worry about hopefully two. But, <laughs> but the thing is about that, it doesn't really matter because we know we can play a trip here on the left now and it work and Saka on the right. Um, and you can interchange as well. We didn't, we didn't see Gordon, but we might introduce Gordon in the, in the, in the semi-final now. But I think, the overriding feeling for me was just positive. I know a lot of people might think we're going a little bit overboard in terms of the three pre shots. I they think had... I think some people think like England should because you've got great players, you should go out and smash it's, anyone. It's hard. But nobody's doing that in this tournament. Yeah, but if you look at the games, we had, we had we had Serbia first game. It was a bit underwhelming. Then we had Denmark, who was very organised. <laughs> then you had Slovenia, yeah. and you've seen how they can defend in the competition. Then you had Slovakia, which. We talk about poor. moments in the game. It was that poor, was but you had moments in the right. game. Yeah. Bellingham came, we had the yeah. moments. And then today, Just in the game. Just. To, to, today it was... It was better, much Why better. The, the fact that it feels, might be a bit overboard, it's because it's been so much better mm. than the previous four games. Exactly. And, and that's the most important thing. And I think we've got to talk about the fact that the, the players with the penalties. Oh. I mean... Wow. To score all five. And you, I, I thought before the penalty shootout, and if I was, you know, if I'd have been a neutral, um, actually the Swiss are always the neutrals, aren't they? But um, <laughs> if I'd have been a neutral, um, I'd have looked at the penalty takers and gone, crikey, England's penalty takers. Added to the fact that our actual penalty taker wasn't on the pitch at that point because he, he, he'd gone off, which is a little bit Cramp. like cramp and stuff and you know Southgate obviously made that decision um it's a little bit like Mbappé on the, the night before remember he he, he came off he so. wasn't right with his his nose was no it? he's struggling he's struggling and um but you know no Harry Kane but after that you go goodness me Cole Palmer who's not missed um Ivan Tony who's like remarkable and it's interesting because there's quite a bit of research on penalties um and I've read quite a bit about it and the fact that you know the amount of seconds that you should take before you actually, from the time that you're ready for your run up to actually striking the ball. Um, the best penalty taker should be uh, first and fourth. Why is that? Well, because the first one, it's very, very important to get off to a good start. So mm -hmm. you want your, your main penalty taken then. And the next one is, is, is in, it's very, very often that the fourth is the crucial one. Um, it wasn't on this occasion, um, as we know, but. It was interesting that Tony went there. Ivan Tony. I mean, my goodness, mate! How, how you can take a penalty without actually even looking at the ball? <laughs> the, the obvious advantage is that, when, as a goalkeeper, you can't guess. You can't go early. So he actually, what he does is it increases the amount of space that he has to score his penalty in. So even if the keeper goes the same way. He can't take a chance because he doesn't actually really know when he's going to take the penalty. But to have the wherewithal to kind of not even look at the ball, but look at the goalkeeper, I mean, oh my goodness. I, I'd be terrified that I might even miss the ball. Was it well, even one step as well? Did he take one well, step like, back, yeah, one that, and a half steps? Like two or three steps, but it's so slow and so, and he's looking at the keeper. But the keeper knows that he's looking at him. So therefore the keeper, he can't do what they normally do, which is that little shuffle and then 
then go because otherwise he's lost. Actually, the keeper went the right way because he's decided to wait. But the fact that he does actually wait increases the amount of space that Tony's got to knock it in. It's, I mean, <laughs> I wouldn't do it myself. And what about the fifth? You mentioned I was it. So I, I, I was so pleased. We've talked about but, Trent. Well, right, let's go to the moment. third first. Okay. Saka. Because Saka, Saka, Saka. that reminded me so much, which which is why I, I I did actually watching it get a little bit um a little bit emotional. He was he was yeah, he I'm was a softy. I'm a softy. I'm a softy. I don't I, I never used to be a softy. I was really cold when I was a player, but now I've got, you know, a little bit of a softy. And um I just thought it, it reminded me so much of the Stuart Pearce moment. Stuart Pearce missed in 1990 when I played, right? And I, you know Stuart. I know Stuart. He's, he's such a diamond of a bloke and a wonderful footballer he was. Um, and then we played against um, against Spain, penalty shootout in '96 in Euros, and he stepped forward again. And I was I was in the crowd and I was thinking, please, please score, don't miss. And everyone in the crowd was the same. It was there was a silence that was palpable and it when he knocked that in and you could it was like i cried on that okay i was sitting in the crowd crying because of tears of joy i don't actually cry when i'm sad i cry when i'm happy um and it and it reminded me of that i mean he took the penalty that you know basically lost the euros so and then to come back you know a young lad um having scored also Absolutely brilliant, <laughs> well do, it? brilliant goal, and then to drag us into you know level before uh, almost immediately after the substitutions was, I mean, what goal by the way, and then when the you know the penalty goes right, it was like it, it reminded me so much of it. It was I, I, he's amazing, and the other th time that I actually welled up a little bit was with Trent because I feel for Trent in this tournament. In terms I, of, in terms of, the, I I think he was a bit hung out to dry a little bit because he's you know he's been suddenly put into that central midfield position, but he was put into it when the team was a bit disjointed, you know it wasn't cohesive. They're all over the place and everyone's blaming Trent. And then he then he takes him off, and I just thought that's not fair, you know that's, and then I was so pleased for him that that a he came on and then he to score the winning penalty. And he's he's such a unbelievably brilliant footballer. Yeah, I think um, when we saw the, the lineups and the formations, we thought Trent Alexander Arnold would play in that wing back role on on the right hand side. Um, it was a little bit disheartening to see him not there. But yeah, no. if you look at uh, yeah. Gareth and, and why he chose Saka, you yeah. sort of understood. Yeah. Um, and I think I'm with you in terms of, you know, social media is a, is a big thing now and everyone's talking about Trent should be starting. and then Yeah, but everyone will have it. opinions on the team. And it's, for me, it was the difference in this performance. It's not about necessarily who's playing, the individuals. It's about the team Correct. and how you play. Mm -hmm. Tactically, we're much better. We're together. We weren't, they weren't super spread out. We weren't playing deep on the edge of our own box. There was a spell. In the game, of course. in the second half, particularly for 15 minutes or something, where they, but that's going to happen. <laughs> These are, you, you get to the quarterfinals of the European Championship, you're not playing against rubbish. <laughs> it's embarrassing now. How did they get away with this nonsense? What nonsense? I feel like we're just like, I don't know, pulling us through. He just picks and chooses when he wants to be on he's, the pod. He's, he's been on the group chat though, hasn't he? Talking yeah, about he four out of four. Who got four out of four? Should we try and get him on the, uh, on the blower? Yeah, oh, the Alan! Ah, we've got him. Some of us are working here <laughs> while you're drinking. Look at this. Ah. You two don't know what work is, man. What are you doing? What are you drinking, Al? Guinness? No, 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 no. <laughs> you're live on the pod, Al. You're live Yay. on the pod, no swearing. <laughs> Oh, fuck off. <laughs> Enjoy your night. I'd love to stay in chat, but I've got to go. <laughs> <laughs> he was so quick to tell us he got all four Is results it? right. Oh, but we'll, 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 we'll do that at that stage when he, when, when he comes. But, um, but, but Harry yeah, Kane, yeah. yeah. different system. Mm. Um, and I show on BBC how you... Would maybe adapt or how would Kane fare in this new system? How do you think he did? Yeah. 
Well, you asked me before the game and then you asked me after the game as well. I think um, before the game, I said it's very important that Kane stays high. Um, and I think he did that. I think the, because a number of reasons. One, you don't need him to defend. So when they've got the ball, although he still did it at times, and I think he does it out of, you know, honesty and, you know, he wants to help out. And I understand that. But it doesn't necessarily help because he's not a defender. He's an attacker. So, so then the important thing for Harry is to stay high because, particularly in this system, if you've got four as a, like a box in midfield, you've got Mainu and Rice, and then ahead of them you've got Bellingham and Foden. So, you know, that's a lot of players in midfield for a start. So what you don't want is another player jogging back into that midfield. So you want to create space. The way to create space is that the centre forward, your number nine, goes really high on their players and gives them a little bit of a threat behind them. Now, we know Harry Kane doesn't spin. So therefore, it's even more important that he really rests against the last man. Now, I think he did that in most of the game. And I think he did it really well. Now, he, it also means that, that he doesn't get involved much in the play and people will be critical of that but he's doing a job because what he's doing by keeping the back three occupied and high is creating more space for the likes of Foden and Bellingham in particular and Maynard as well to to do their stuff so I thought he did he did it really well and I thought he looked a little bit sharper I think he's been struggling he's been a little bit leggy in this tournament but I think there was it was more encouraging performance and I think he was more he was disciplined in that role and people say, well, yeah, but he didn't, you know, he didn't have a chance. He didn't, that's life as a centre forward sometimes. Yeah. Sometimes, it, you know, you don't get the chances. So um, I thought he did fine. You know, you could, you could say someone like Watkins could do, would do a different job because he does look behind and he would help with the press. But I thought England generally pressed well and I thought Harry was part of that. And, but we do know that if Kane does get a chance, you wouldn't back anyone in world football other than probably... Messi and Mbappe to finish it off. So, uh, and maybe Ronaldo in his in his prime, obviously. But yeah, the conundrum now though is um, the formation. It's worked. We've looked the best in this free mm -hmm. box sort of free formation. The question now would be: Do we keep the same formation for Netherlands? And that because we we mentioned Gerhi, how good he's been. Concert came in today, did brilliantly well. Luke Shaw is now fit. It's it's difficult for the manager now. And and, and, and the whole point of it is that the squad's big. 26-man squad. I mentioned it many times. You've got to utilise your squad. Well, particularly don't forget nowadays, at the end of... You know, the players are tired at the end of a season anyway. And that's why sometimes I think we see... We see games that are a little bit kind of cautious because players don't have that high energy. Um, you know, the Spanish players, a lot of them, are, it's a little bit more energy than everyone else. But, you know, the, their league, I remember when we talked to Eric Cantona, he said their league, you know, they don't have that many high dynamic games like English players do. So, um, but yeah, I, I mean, it, we look better that way. We would do you go, way better. Would, would you go back to how we played? And then he's got the problem of, you know, he's got to play Foden on the left again or... No, I think you stick with it. It works. But do you move, do you move Luke Shaw in, in it's a wing-back position? Because when he came well, on the pitch, he was like left of the three at, at the back. Yes, be, yeah, but we were behind when he came I, I, exactly. on. Exactly. So there's so to much to, to, to think of about. Of course there is. And we'll talk about that when Alan arrives yeah. and we'll, you know, but, we'll get... You know, in terms of the that. individuals, I don't think it matters that much about individuals, who plays where and all that. Well, it does, obviously. But the most important thing is now that England looked like they were playing as a unit. They looked like together. They looked like they were going up the pitch together and they were going back down the pitch together. And they played way more positively and way higher than they've played in recent games. You know, whether you know Shaw comes in for Trippi or whether he's ready to play, will he start him? I mean, he's not going to be able to play 90 minutes yet. But he might play an six, hour. Yeah, six times. Um, yeah. So do you start him and do that? As a player, I would prefer that. Or do you wait and then bring him on if need be to give a bit more? Because he, he definitely would give us a better balance than... Because, you know, Trippier, I think, has done a good job. And he tried and he got up and he played high. But he's not a natural left back. He's no. not. He's not. And, and Luke Shaw is. And he's... Luke Shaw is amazing. I mean, he's, like, he's like he's never been away. Just strolled into the team, didn't he? I know. So, I Nonchalantly. Mean, I, 
my feeling is we'll play the same way, but I think Luke Shaw will start. Um, whether, the interesting thing will be whether he brings Gehi back um, for concert. I, I suspect he will. I think Gehi was our, probably our best player be, prior to this this game and he was suspended. Um, I think the, the four in midfield worked really well. Um, the amazing quality they've got coming from the bench. I thought, I thought Eze was Class. superb. I mean, he doesn't give the ball away. I, he looks so calm and confident. Um, I thought Palmer is a, Palmer's a beautiful football. He's, he, there's no question he's going to play lots of lots of football matches for him. I, I like the but fact you can't that play them all. When, you can't play them all. When Bellingham went a little bit deeper, yeah. didn't he, with, with Rice, and then he had like Cole that. Palmer and Foden I like, in the tens. And Bellingham started. I mean, Bellingham <sighs> when he's when he's facing forwards is better than when he's facing backwards Agreed. and he and he runs at players and he chops and he creates ch I thought I thought this was Bellingham's best game um I mean he played well in the first match obviously um and he had the moment in the last round but I thought you know he was in it a lot more and I thought he was I thought I thought it was a really encouraging performance and you know was it exhilarating was it like you know did they create loads of chances no but it was a massive step in the right direction and you don't want to peak at the in, in the early stage of the tournament. You want to peak at the end of the tournament you know, and stay in it. And that's what they've done. You know what I really enjoyed about tonight's game, though? I think from... The, the red wine? <laughs> well, oh, that, the red wine's fantastic. But Frank's analysis. So normally when oh, we before do the game, analysis, yeah. Yeah. you know, pre-game, um, we normally have around a minute and a half, two minutes max, if it's yeah. really something but, but if detailed. It's, if it's an England game, we, obviously we've got an hour build-up, so we can have a bit more time than, but, than you would normally But Frank's have. analysis was about three minutes. And normally, if someone goes that deep, you're like, after maybe two minutes, mm. you sort of, you've lost interest. But I was glued to it yeah. for three Same. minutes. You can you can tell he's just got, he's got something... He's articulate, the way he explains points, and you can tell there's a manager there in inside of no, him. There's no question about that. I think he's been a bit luck, unlucky in his managerial career in, in, in some ways. I think, you know, he's he, he gets it tactically. Um, he's Frank Lampard <laughs> as yeah. well. But that, you know, that sometimes he, comes with its problems. I mean, I think this will be, you know, Gareth Southgate's last tournament. Last, I think whatever happens, if he wins, I think he'll... It, He'll absolutely bow out. I think he will. And if he doesn't, then I think he'll bow out. It'll be his decision. Um, but I, I, I wouldn't disregard, you know, I would, Frank Lampard. Yeah. I think he tactically gets it. I think the players will respect him immediately. And he's uh, getting ahead of things here. But, uh, you know, you want well, to, you, you have to look know, at his if, career, if, if you're going to you? go English, you go, like, who else? Eddie Howe? Eddie Howe. Eddie Howe, maybe. possibly. Yeah. We don't want to upset yeah. Newcastle fans. But I think when he went to Derby, I think. The the feeling was he played really good football, yeah. but the, he his, should he should have got him up. It was his first job. He went to Chelsea yeah. under the transfer mm. embargo yeah. and still managed really to difficult. top four yeah. with all yeah. the bringing the young players through Abraham Mount etc cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, then he went to Everton and kept them up. Yeah. He kept them up though. Yeah, he did. It yeah. wasn't the great style of play, no, but, but you know it, we know it, it utilized yeah. what he had available yeah. to him. Of course, goes obviously back to Chelsea. I think, I think that I was, think that was yeah, the that, one yeah. that where people were judging him on something that. But we've seen since that the, that club is in a bit. Of, it's been uh, of course some time. It, it, it can yeah, be yeah. chaos, Chelsea, yeah. but. I just, I really enjoyed working yeah. with him. Yeah. I, 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 I think I worked with a lot of people. Thierry Henry, really good analytically. Roberto Martinez, who I've worked with um, on, on CBS. Obviously, Alan Shearer. I thought he did brilliantly on, on Cocoms today. Um, but I really like people. Danny Murphy is really good at the tactical yeah. side of the game. And listen to all these people. Carragher is is one of my favourites. Yeah. The the able to explain and break down the game, like in a but that three minutes that way, Frank did was it, it I mean, was, was amazing. It was well. it was yeah, one of the best. Yeah, it was one yeah. of the best. So yeah, in terms of the show, I, I really enjoyed. It's fun, it. isn't it? Doing a big England. It's game. just it's great. It's a buzz, it's especially great. when it ends up like that with a penalty shootout, and you know there is. I don't know. I think our audience will be over twenty million for that game combined. Oof, will it? Oh yeah, combined on BBC and and iPlay, I'm absolutely convinced there'll be more. And also, don't forget that a lot of those people will be watching it, you know, in big 
groups and parties and all that sort of stuff. So I, most of the country would have been watching that. Yeah, yeah definitely. And it's 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 a buzz to do it, and it's it's so much. Fun. Are you more energized though? Uh, you are. for the England games? Yeah, absolutely. Because when when you read your opening, mm. so you have the before the the show starts, doesn't it? Yeah. And then you have to say your lines yeah. to whatever VT's running and all. Yeah. But I could tell you're always up for it, but you was really up for it today. Yeah. But it's a big game. It's like when you're playing a big, if you're playing like the players today, you're playing the quarterfinals of the Euros. It's big, isn't it? So you get more of a buzz. It's like the adrenaline pumps more. There's more excitement and it's great. And um, and it's so much better, isn't it, when England do well and win than it having is. to kind of, you don't, the last thing in the world we will ever want to do is be critical, but we have to be honest. But it's so much of, it's like, it's, it's brilliant when England win, especially it, something like a penalty shootout that's with all the, five players scoring. That's one of the best buzzes yeah. I've had yeah. on TV yeah. since I've been doing it for mm. what, four or five years now. Yeah. It's just, what was the word you use? Exhilarating? Yeah, it was mm, class. It was, yeah. it, was, it, was, it was fantastic. Uh, Netherlands. <laughs> Netherlands next. They beat Turkey. <laughs> um, it, that was a good game as well. End to end stuff. End to end. A couple of chances. I think uh, Netherlands had some chances as well. Um, Turkey towards the end of the game. Had a real <sighs> go there, didn't they? Oh, they just. Um, there was a header. I remember late doors. There was a opportunity where the keepers saved it and he's just thinking so I'm thinking now England going through semis who who would you want and it's no disrespect to Turkey because Turkey have been very good I think uh, Yildiz and uh, Gula have been fantastic Demiral at the back Chanelaglu was back in midfield for them today as well so they've got players who can hurt you not now I just think <laughs> Netherlands I mean it's just they have the fear factor with Van Dyke. They've got Aki. Um, they've got Gakpo. Well, up you're front. in the semi final of the Euros, Never. Mikey. You're not going to get, you know, I you know, expect but, to play a big yeah, team at but, that point. But Turkey was, was so close to getting it done. <laughs> It was it was so close yeah. to getting it done. You're thinking you want to play the best. We, I mean, we want to win. That's what you want. I don't care about playing the best. We just want to win. Um, and I just think. On their day, Netherlands have a little bit more than Turkey. I still believe Are you England... disappointed San Marino didn't get through? It, so. <laughs> <laughs> I, I still think... Yeah. Well, um, we've, got, we've got time to review, look ahead to that game okay. at some point. We'll preview that game at some point. When Alan's back. But yeah, but England, Netherlands and, um, and France versus... Spain, Spain. It's um, it's the business end of the tournament, and England is still in it, and mm. that's that's the main thing, isn't it? Correct. Yeah. So, come on, come on, come on, England. Don't say, don't say it. Do it, not I'm say. I'm not saying. I'm not saying not it. Say I just it. said, come on, Do England. Not say it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's a jinx. Yeah, I'm not, and no Rio, Rio's has, jinxing us every time in the studio today. Every time he, he give a compliment to a player, they kick it out of play. <laughs> but we won. We won. England that's won. all that matters. And, and they won on penalties and all five players scored. And that's wonderful. Correct. It was brilliant. It was yeah. outstanding. We'll get Alan Shearer's view tomorrow when he comes back. Yes. Yeah. Not his, not his view now. I don't think we, <laughs> want, we don't want to do that. But um, um, that's it for this um, episode. Um, goodbye from me. And goodbye from me. <laughs> <laughs>